Hi, welcome to this video where I uh, will break down how I created this stylized World War I airplane. The purpose of this video, or maybe uh, multiple videos, will be to explain my thought process and walk you through all of the steps I took into making this. I have decided to split this into a few parts. The first part being uh, picking an object that you want to stylize and create in 3D. So this will include gathering references, maybe some style inspirations, um, and then taking the first step into designing, or like creating your own little concept. Then the second part um, will be putting it into 3D. So I use 3ds Max for that. Um, so you will take all these things that you just made and use them to make your 3D model. Then the third part will be unwrapping. I will show you uh, my unwraps and talk a little bit about how I usually tackle this and how I unwrap keeping uh, texturing in mind. And then the fourth part will be texturing itself, which to me is um, the most important part of the, the whole process um, and also the most time consuming. So here I will be talking about choosing colors thinking about um, light source and values, contrast, detailing, decals, um, making a texture that really, really makes your object come alive. And then as a final part, I will be talking about creating a little scene, an environment, um, something to decorate and enhance your asset with, uh, creating a little story around it and basically just making it um, as appealing as you possibly can to your viewers. I made this airplane as um, an assignment for my game art course at Digital Arts and Entertainment. I am a game graphics production student who loves 3D, who loves stylized art in general. So hopefully um, I can share some tips with you. Let's uh, move on to the first part. Right, so as I said, um, I made this as an assignment for my game art course. So for me, there wasn't really uh, much choice into what object I was going to make. Um, it had to be a plane dating from World War I. But the type of plane or the model uh, was up to us. So I decided to go with the uh, Airco DH4. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So when picking an object, I would say, think about how you are going to stylize it. Stylization of an object that already exists um, and not creating something of your own to me is about finding the qualities it already possesses and enhancing these um, and kind of over-exaggerating these. So what I liked about this plane was um, the fact that it had these kind of uh, double wings. There's planes that only have like one or um, three kind of wings. To me that wasn't really as appealing. I thought two was just right. Um, Another part that I really liked is the engine kind of sticking out in the side. I thought that would be really cool if I, you know, over-exaggerated that and, and that would look really nice when stylized. Um, another part I really liked and probably like the most important part to me was the shape of the front. I kind of like this um, rectangular shape. And um, my goal was to kind of put emphasis on that. Um, so after gathering all of these pictures, what I did is um, I put it into Photoshop. Um, because maybe you already have like an idea or a vision of how you want your plane to look or your object to look. So I basically started playing around with them, um, which I will show here. So this is um, an original side view. And then I kind of photo bashed them into um, creating this, which to me wasn't stylized or over exaggerated enough. So then it turned into this. But then this was maybe like a little bit over the top. And I didn't like how the shape here went up more because over here it's it's pretty straight and I Again, I don't want to change anything too much. I just want to exaggerate what it already has um, and really put emphasis. So 
I don't want to create a new plane. I just I want it to be recognizable, but exaggerated. Um, so to me, this really helped in, into getting in a better understanding of what it is um, about this object that you know would look good stylized. It's one thing to have um, an idea in your head, but it's a lot more helpful when you can kind of see this idea in front of you, which is what I was trying to do here. Um, that's why here you only have a side view. But to me that wasn't, I don't know, like clear enough. So I made this, this is the original perspective. And then I made it into this. I had this idea of a kind of like double engine, <laughs> but uh, I didn't end up going with that. Um, so then finally I made this drawing, which is, I think the most representative of what it actually ended up being. Um, and that was really helpful in, into, you know, when I moved into putting it into 3D. So maybe it's interesting when you actually put, um, the final model I ended up with. Oh boy, <laughs> when you put that next to what I actually drew here, it's pretty interesting that it's not too far off, you know, it's it's not the same. Like here, I didn't like that it was almost square. I really wanted to keep that re rectangular shape, but it is pretty similar, which shows that it really is helpful to, to do these things. And these can be really, really quick. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. Um, I think it, it looked like it took a couple of hours to make all of these, like not even. Um, and, you know, it's good to have a really clear visual idea of what you're going to make once you, you put it into 3D. So for uh, the modeling part, I made a short time lapse to demonstrate how I started modeling this. I started with um, a really simple block out where I am really looking for um, the main shapes. I don't want to get caught up in details. I'm not going to start working on the engine or propellers or guns or anything. I really want to keep this as simple and basic as possible to start with. Because the more simple it is, um, the easier it will be to adjust it later on. And once you have those main shapes uh, and those basics blocked in and you're happy with the shapes, adding in details like the guns and the engines and wires and all those things, um, which really help in making it come to life and making it look complex, but that's actually pretty easy. Um, the focus for me here really is about making it read well and making it have an interesting silhouette. I am trying to see um, what the proportions will be if my shapes are consistent with the actual plane. Uh, so what I mean by that is if the bottom of my plane doesn't have a curve, then I want to make sure that I don't model it in a curve. It seems uh, really straightforward, I know, but it's pretty easy to accidentally make it different than it actually is, I found. I had some issues um, with the tail, for example. Uh, it always ended up being far more rounded than it actually is. Um, in, in the original plane or in the original picture. So that's a small element that is pretty defining for the shape uh, and definitely for the silhouette. So you really want to keep those things the same. Um, another thing to keep in mind, not so much at this stage yet, but a little bit later, is to think about topology. Stylized game assets are usually uh, pretty low poly, so optimizing your object is important. You really want it to look as good as possible with as few polys possible. So that's why I started with a really low poly block out because it's handy. Um, in my experience, it's far more easy to add details and add curves than to remove them. You will see me moving around edges and welding vertices uh, quite a lot here because I pretty much only want what's essential. However, um, and this is a bit tricky because, you know, you don't want to make it too low poly. When you turn off the wireframe and there's a wing, for example, with a curve, you don't really want to be able to count the amount of edges. 
So it's a bit of um, a balancing act. So you have to really ask yourself where you can um, where you can save on polys and where you can spend them. So where do you want your focus to be? Uh, to me, the curve in the front is pretty important. So I will spend some more polys there. Then, for example, when I make the gun or the wheels later on, um, those are smaller elements and not as important. So I will use less sides there. Uh, another thing you will see me do in this time lapse at a certain point is I copy the base model I have around a few times and I play around with the scale tool to see if I can maybe push it a bit further. So I make it a bit more narrow or a bit shorter or um, I, I try to find out what would work best. So it's important to keep in mind that even though you're already modeling, nothing is set in stone yet. Um, you can still change a lot of your design depending on what looks best. And then at the end here, I show you what my finished model looks like. And although it is far more detailed than, you know, the what I have here in the beginning, the block out, the body itself isn't too much different. It's everything next to it that makes it look a lot more complex. But the main body and the main shapes are really quite simple. 